Welcome to this video tutorial on creating perspective eye level views in Rhino 7. In this video I'm going to be going through how to create eye level views in an internal space using this simple model here. The key to setting up good eye level views in Rhino 7 is to first make sure your camera is at the appropriate height as a person's eye level would be in such space and to also make sure your camera is looking directly horizontal. If the camera is panning up you get a really strong perspective on the vertical lines within your scene which can cause a kind of tapering effect to the image and the same goes for if the camera is looking downwards this can cause a kind of tapering and the perspective point to be at the bottom of the image creating a weird angle on the vertical lines as shown in the examples here so we want to make sure that when we set up our camera we keep it perfectly horizontal and we make sure it's at eye level now to do this for an internal space i usually use a clipping plane first to chop my model so I can see inside the space when I set this camera up. To do this I usually just set up a clipping plane in my scene like this, make sure we kind of got the right direction on so we're just cutting off the roof like so. And I'm going to set my camera from around the back of this scene here, just at the back behind this table. Now I'm not going to kind of move my perspective icon into place and find the view this way because I won't know if it's exactly at eye level and I'm not sure if I'm going to be slightly looking upwards or downwards which will cause that tapering effect. So in order to make sure I'm perfectly at eye level I'm going to draw a cube just using the box tool here and it doesn't matter kind of how wide this box is the important thing is it's at the correct height and we want to make sure this box is at a height of around 1.6 meters. I'm in millimeters here, so it's around 1,600 millimeters there. And that's the kind of average height for a person which we're gonna use there. Um, then what you wanna do is just move this box into the location you want your camera to be. So this is essentially our dummy person that we're gonna be using. And let's just put it on the default layer so we can kind of clearly see that there. Once you've made your person box, we're then gonna create a copy of that box and we're going to move it to the location we want the camera to be looking. So I'm just using the copy tool here. We're first going to create a copy of the box and when I move the box I'm just going to use the gumball using the X and Y axis here so we'll make sure we're not moving the box vertically up or down because we want it to be on exactly the same level as the original box I've made and I'm going to be looking kind of out this window so let's put the box there where we'll be looking. So there we've got our kind of two boxes in place. Now what we're going to do, now we've placed those boxes, is we're going to use a tool under view, set camera, and place camera and target. And this allows us to place a point where we want our camera to be and a point where we want our target to be. And we're going to use our two boxes we've made here to lock the camera and target to the same level. So we're going to select place camera and target. We're going to place the camera first on the first box. And I'm just going to place it in the middle here. And then I'm going to place the target and make sure it's snapped to somewhere along the top of the other box, which is going to be on exactly the same vertical level as my camera was. And let's just place that sort of there. And there you can see the camera is now snapped to that view. And we've got a nice kind of perfectly horizontal. All my vertical lines are straight, which means my camera is looking perfectly horizontal in this scene. But I see at the moment it's a little bit zoomed in. So we're going to need to sort of dial in this view a little bit to make it look correct for our scene. Now, what I usually do is once I've got this view, I'm going to go and make sure nothing in my scene is selected just by clicking some empty space there. Go to my properties and we're going to have a look at this lens length here. Now, if we're on an external view, a lens length of 50 or 40 might work quite well to keep quite a nice flat view. But if you're in an internal space, you might need to lower this value down to get a kind of larger field of view so we can see more objects. For this particular view, I think let's try a sort of 20 lens length. And there you can see we're kind of seeing slightly more in our scene. We might also just need to kind of go and turn that clipping plane off there so we can kind of get that in the view as well. And you might want to play around with sort of different frame aspects. Usually I kind of keep this on the side here and I might sort of juggle around the viewport until I get a wider view and I think a portrait view for this particular image might work well. So this is just a case of kind of getting the right aspect ratio and just dialing in that lens length until you get something that works well. I 
wouldn't go below 15 millimeters on your lens length because it might look very warped you'll see if I put it down to a 5 for example it gets very extreme there so I think 15 20 is usually your lowest but you might have to go quite low in order to get the angle in the one thing to make sure is not to pan away from this point because if you do so you won't have your view at eye level anymore and mine's set to that eye level because we place the camera and the target on those boxes that we put in to help constrain it to an actual person's height so now we've got that view what I can do is just in plan I'm just going to select those two boxes I made and we're just going to hide them because we don't need them anymore and we're just going to make sure we save the view out as a named view now I've got my named view panel on the side here but you can also find it under view set view and named views and that will open it up and then we can just hit save and save this particular view here make sure we're in the right view as our eye level view there and hit OK and from there we can then render that view out we can turn it into a make 2d if you want and that was just a very quick video tutorial on how to set up an eye level view for use in Rhino I hope you found this video helpful if you want to watch any of our videos on rendering or making drawings or modeling in Rhino then please check out the videos on the channel